Yo, what's up, guys? It's Aptrix here. Today, in this video, we'll be taking a look at the brand new Uzui MMJR emulator, which just released few days ago, and it is supposed to be way better than the Uzui Edge emulator. And let me just tell you guys that it has a lot of brand new settings, customization, and improvements. But before starting, if you guys are new here, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications as I upload similar videos regarding emulation on Android devices. With that being said, let's get started. So basically, guys, Uzui MMJR was created to add new features and implement brand new settings. I won't go into detail about all of this but let me just go ahead and tell you guys that there have been improvements in shader recompiler and increased performance resource efficiency and much more by the way the usui mmjr emulator is now way less in terms of size compared to the other emulators like sudachi or usui edge emulator which is pretty amazing so let's get started with the setup i forgot to mention that the brand new version of usui mmjr which i am using was just released today and it has vulcan implementation and the usui mmjr build which i am using in today's video is the normal version not the n2 version so we'll be testing out if normal performance is better than other emulators or not but if we just go ahead and open settings go to advanced settings and system we'll be able to set the limit speed percent to 400 as usual but if we go to graphics you'll be able to notice that lot of brand new settings have been added such as ASTC quality so you'll be able to set it to fastest low quality ASTC decode mode is set to CPU you can also set it to CPU asynchronous vSync mode will make sure to turn it off we'll also make sure that anti-aliasing is disabled shader backend is set to GLSL which is fastest we also have SPIR with shader generation which I haven't tested out but I used to use it inside Citra emulator we also get brand new options such as multi core CPU emulation this option increases CPU emulation thread from 1 to the switch maximum of 4 we also get sync core option which synchronizes CPU core speed to games maximum rendering speed which can be useful to increase FPS without increasing the actual speed of the game other than that, we can enable force maximum clocks and asynchronous shaders. We can also set the resolution all the way down to 0.25x which I won't be doing in today's video. I want to see the gameplay results at 1x graphics resolution. And in terms of debug, there isn't any new settings. CPU backend is set to native code execution. With that being said, I forgot to add the latest graphics driver which is the latest Mesa Turnip driver version 24.3.0 revision 1. Now it is very new. This driver also adds support for Snapdragon 7H Gen 3 and 8H Gen 3 processors which is pretty amazing so if your snapdragon processor was not supported with graphics driver then with the help of this graphics driver it should start working now with that being said let's start off by trying out ea sports fc24 to see if the compatibility has been improved and no the compatibility hasn't been improved it is just like how the old emulator was but in today's video we'll be testing out dark souls remastered and i have also noticed that the controls look pretty great now with the brand new theming which is definitely appreciated you guys always tell me that why do i only test out pokemon games you want me to test out different games anyways let me just go ahead and swipe back also go to overlay options and make sure to enable thermal indicator so we'll be able to see at the top right corner what exactly is the temperature of our android device all right unfortunately i am unable to enter my name because the overlay for typing characters or keywords is just not launching inside this emulator so i don't think we'll be able to play dark souls remastered at least on our android devices so let's move on towards obviously other games which i have loaded on my android device for today's video we'll be trying out pokemon legends rcs instead of pokemon sword or let's go pikachu this is way more demanding game compared to both of them so let's see how well does it actually work honestly i believe we should at least get like 60 fps while emulating this game and one great thing of uzui mmjr it just doesn't cause any heating issues like like my device is not overheating at all it is at 38 degrees celsius whereas if you try using the n2 to builds if you have a very capable processor then your device will 100% overheat and it will also cause battery drainage so if you have a great device don't use the n2 to build if you have a low-end android device go for it and it shouldn't really cause much heating issues on low-end devices as the processors are just not capable enough and you'll be able to see the thermal go up by a little bit so we are almost at 39 degrees celsius now which is once again not that bad at all for gaming phones and there we go pokemon legends rcs has successfully started and is playable on our android devices in one is graphics resolution everything is being rendered properly without any issues so there are indeed no graphical issues or texture issues so this is how far a stable nintendo switch emulator for android will get instead of using the egg ns emulator i do prefer using these kind of nintendo switch emulators as you get better performance instead of the 30 fps cap inside egg ns emulator and if you use n22 versions then obviously you will get more fps but there we go now we are able to play pokemon legends rcs on our android devices and just take a look at the top left corner we are getting anywhere from 
50 to 60 FPS, which is not that bad at all. Because as far as I know, compared to Pokemon Sword and Let's Go Pikachu, this is way harder to emulate. In Let's Go Pikachu, I am pretty sure we would get 120 FPS, but I have already tested Let's Go Pikachu out on many of my other videos. But if you want gameplay videos for Pokemon Sword and Let's Go Pikachu, then do let me know in the comment section down below. In terms of overall gameplay performance, I will have to say that Uzui MMJR is pretty stable and if you want me to make a comparison of it compared to like let's say Sudachi Emulator or Nyoshi Emulator, then let's say 250 likes on today's video. Anyways, I think that's going to sum up everything that you need to know about this emulator. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.